In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Welcome back to our uh, series on the Orthodox Creed. Um, uh, today is the fifth talk on the Incarnation, and uh, so far um, we've been speaking of who God is, um, and uh, we spoke of God the Father, and what he does, and what he is like, and what the essence of God is, um, and we spoke of the Holy Trinity. Last time, we uh, described the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we're entering into the second part, if you will, of, of the creed, which speaks more of not who God is, but what he does. And the most logical place, um, and the place that the creed starts, is the incarnation, right? And once we understand the theological implications of the incarnation, it helps us understand more um, the, the rest, as, as we'll see. And then finally, we conclude of how to live uh, in sacramental life, um, the, the salvation that God has offered to us uh, through Christ. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so last time, we spoke of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, not created, but begotten, and of one essence with the Father. Okay, uh, so this time, though, we'll speak um, or go more into detail of the part that says, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and became man. Um, and uh, before we get into the details, I thought maybe uh, a nice fictional story might help us uh, understand um, some of the theology behind this. Okay, um, so I'll kind of read to you <laughs> a nice story that I found online. Again, it's not written by any of the fathers, anything like that, but um, might make it a little more sense. So one with some part of time, there was a man who didn't believe in God. He had a wife and children who did. Um, and on one wintry night, I believe it was Christmas Eve, she took her children to the church to contemplate upon the holy nativity um, or the purpose of the incarnation. Um, and she invited him. He said, no, that's nonsense. Why would God himself come down to earth um, and live as a man, right? Um, that's ridiculous, according to him. So a while grew, um, a while passed, and um, the winds grew stronger and there was a blizzard. Um, and he looked out the window, he couldn't see anything. Um, a few minutes later, he heard a thump and then another thump. Um, and so he went outside to, to see what was going on and he found um, a flock of wild geese not too far away um, who were flying south for the winter, but got stuck in the storm, got lost, and um, they were on the verge of uh, uh, not having any food or shelter um, and could have possibly died. So um, he had compassion on these geese um, and he wanted to help them. Um, and he, he thought, well, I have a barn. Maybe that's a perfect place for them to stay for the night. So he opened the doors wide and he watched to see what would happen. And they didn't go inside, right? Um, and he tried to get their attention, but that kind of scared them, and that didn't work. Um, so he went out of the house and came uh, with some bread and uh, made a trail <laughs> with the crumbs. Um, that didn't work either, right? They didn't catch on, so he got frustrated. Um, then he got behind them and tried to shoo them, and that got them even more <laughs> afraid, and they just scattered in every direction. Um, and he, got he said, well, why? Well, why? don't they just follow me? Can't they see this is the only way that they could survive? Um, but apparently <laughs> they could not. Then he thought, if, if I became like them, if I became a goose, you know, I could save them. Um, so uh, he tried to act like a goose. It didn't work. <laughs> it still scared them. But then he went into the barn, right? He got one of his own geese, right? His beloved goose. <laughs> And forgive me for the um, uh, disrespect, <laughs> if, but this is just an analogy, right? So he got one of his own geese 
Um, he carried it in his arms. He walked around them with, with the goose, and then he let the goose go, right? And it flew where? Straight into the barn, and all the geese followed. Um, so then he understood well, the answer to his, uh, what seemed to be a silly question. Why would God lower himself to come to earth on, uh, as a man? Um, He's like, just like he wanted to become like the goose to save the geese, the Lord God, the Father, sent his only begotten son into the world to take flesh, right, as, as man, so that he could pave the way of salvation um, and save mankind. Then finally, he worshiped God, saying, thank you, Lord, for coming in human form to save me from the storm. Um, so that's kind of like what we're going to talk about uh, today, God willing. Um, and so let's jump into the text of the creed, and then we'll kind of uh, end by um, discussing some of the implications of the incarnation. Okay, so we, we start this portion by saying, who for us men and for our salvation, right? So the purpose, again, of the incarnation, the main purpose is salvation of man. Um, and St. Athanasius, who wrote extensively uh, on the Incarnation, there's a book, you know, after his name on this, he says, our transgression called forth his loving kindness so that he came to us and the Lord was displayed among human beings. It's because he needed to save us, right? For we were the occasion or the reason of his embodiment, of his taking flesh. And for our salvation, he went so far in his love for mankind as to be born. So God broke all barriers um, for the purpose of saving us. And in order to do that, he had to come down or he had to come out of his house, right? Um, and this was prophesied by the Lord God himself in the book of Exodus, right? He says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, right? And I have come down to rescue them. Um, and St. Arrhenius uh, quotes this verse in scripture, and he says, from the beginning, he was accustomed as the word of God, this is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, to descend and ascend for the salvation of those who are in distress. Um, so he had to come down from heaven, you know, in order to save and to raise us up. But when we say came down from heaven, this is not necessarily um, uh, you know, uh, a description that, that talks of um, a geographical statement, if you will, but it means that it's, it's mo more deeper than that. His divine life or his divinity entered into the human life or into, into humanity, right? God entered into the world. Um, God is the creator of the world and he exists uh, and he is not limited, right? But when he took flesh, when he united with the human nature, right? Um, that was something big, <laughs> right? And something that changed the whole world and all of humanity from that point on. Um, and that's why St. John speaks of this, you know, extensively in his gospel. And the Lord says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, right? That is the son of man who is in heaven. So when you say come down, you say the, the, the spiritual, the heavenly, the godly has humbled himself in order to unite with the, the worldly in order to raise the worldly back up uh, to heaven, okay? Um, <clears throat> and this is why, again, he says in the gospel according to St. John, I came forth from the father and have come into the world. Okay, um, so it's not just a geographical statement here, but here is um, a, on a more deeper level, God is uniting um, with man. Okay, um, and it, it was a humbling act, of course, um, because he, in a sense, disrobed himself of his glory in order to take the form of a servant. And we'll speak more about that, God willing, next time. Um, <clears throat> So we say he was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. This is uh, a very deep statement that the fathers have written books on, on this. So we're, we can't 
say too much and at the same time we can't just uh, not stop at this and pause and, and contemplate on this. So St. Paul in his epistle to St. Timothy writes, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifested in the flesh, right? This is a great mystery. This is um, the, the incomprehensible act of God for the purpose of making it more comprehensible for man to get closer to God himself, right? Because by manifesting himself in the flesh. Um, and like we were saying last time, his divinity united with his humanity um, and to form the, what we call the Logos incarnate. The Logos is the name of the second person, the Holy Trinity before the incarnation, right? Um, because the Son of God existed, right? The Son of God, right? When the Son of God became the Son of Man, meaning he took flesh, right? He was fully man um, without sin. Um, <clears throat> and uh, his humanity united perfectly with his divinity. Um, and he was completely human in body and spirit and completely equal with God and continuously united with God, the Father and God, the Holy Spirit. Right. And as St. Cyril says, he is the one incarnate nature of the Logos, the, the Logos incarnate. Um, and maybe at another time we can go even more deeper into this, but um, let's move to the concept of, well, wh what does this mean? Or, or what are the benefits and the blessings of the incarnation. And like we were saying, the first and foremost point is salvation, right? So take the acronym of flesh, because he took flesh, but gave forgiveness of sins. He expressed and showed and revealed his love to us, which has been since the beginning, because that's the definition of himself, as we said, right? He opened up, reopened the door to eternal life through himself, and he saved us, like we said, as the high priest who heals and who, um, who has come down to unite heaven and earth. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the first point, forgiveness of sin, right? As the Psalms say, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him, as far as the east is from the west, right? Um, that's how far he removed our sin, okay? So he grant us the forgiveness of sins through the cross, but again, nothing could have happened on the cross without the incarnation happening first, right? If God just came and appeared on the cross, then how could he die for our sin? He had to take flesh first, obviously, right? Um, so um, everything revealed to us on the cross was made possible by the incarnation, okay? Um, and St. Athanasius says, the word became man and took as his own properties of the flesh, uh, henceforth, humans no longer remain sinful and dead, okay? So man was in a state of death and corruption, like St. Athanasius says, um, but they have, they no longer remain in that state if they go through the Christ, okay? They rise in accordance with the word's power and persist immortal, incorruptible. Why? Because he took flesh and because he died, <laughs> okay? Um, and rose, of course. Um, so uh, that is the first point. We, we are granted forgiveness of our sins through um, the salvation work of Christ, okay? Um, the second point is love, right? Love is of God because God is love, as St. John describes, right? Uh, in this, the love of God was manifested toward us. So God always loved us, but it was seen more clearly to us through Christ. And maybe that's why some religions who don't believe in Christ or who don't have not, never read the gospel, right, might not be able to deeply comprehend the love of God um, because the love of God is manifest perfectly in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did and what he said and how he died for us, right? Um, uh, so, uh, that is a big deal, <laughs> okay? Um, also, uh, the scholar Clement of Alexandria says, God is himself love, 
and because of his love, he pursued us, right? Like the, um, like the man who is pursuing uh, to engage and to betroth and to marry his beloved, right? This love was the reason he came down and assumed or took human nature. Um, and there's a story here also of a, a, a Danish philosopher um, ab about a prince and a fair maiden. Uh, this is a common story, you know, but um, one day this uh, rich, wealthy, um, and powerful prince was riding um, through a town in his carriage, um, and he noticed uh, a beautiful maiden, and he fell in love with her. Or he began to fall in love with her after stopping and starting to speak with her. Um, and after he fell in love, <laughs> he said, okay, um, what do I do now? Uh, I, I would like to marry her. How, how can I do this? I could just, you know, um, bring her to my palace and propose. And she will be, be very uh, overwhelmed with... Um, the glory and the grandeur of the palace. And because of the desire to be there, she'll say yes, but I don't want that. Um, say, well, another thing I could do is I could come to her home and even in my uh, grand apparel and because people know me very well, they will, the family and she will be also overwhelmed as, as at the honor of marrying me. Um, but I don't want to do that either. <laughs> uh, and the third idea was, you know what? Um, I can come to her as a peasant like her. Um, and um, then if she still loved me, then I would understand that this is because of who I am and not um, uh, what I have, right? So then he thought more, he's like, well, I can't just appear as a peasant and get her to fall in love with me. It's gonna take time. I need to get to know her. She needs to get to know me. Um, so he decided, okay, I will not just come as a, but I'll live as a peasant <laughs> for until um, we'll, we'll get to know each other gradually. And if she does fall in love with me and agree to marry me, then I know for sure. And then I will reveal who I really am and take her to my palace and we'll live happily forever after. Right, so this is kind of uh, the same story of the geese, but this is more in line of the idea of he taught us the way of salvation. He didn't just save. He could have just died the minute after he was born, right? And that sacrifice could have been enough. But the Lord God said, no, no, I, I will like to stay more because I want to teach them the way of salvation um, in the flesh. Okay, um, <clears throat> and of course he couldn't do this according to the law until he was the age of 30. So he, 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 he didn't really um, uh, preach public ministry until that age. Um, so uh, this was again, all done out of his immense love for mankind. Okay, um, the next point is obviously he doesn't just want to save us, but he wants to uh, allow us to re-enter the kingdom and re-enter the paradise and grant us eternal life. And St. Athanasius says, he bestows birth on all others so that they come into being. God gives us life. This is in order that he may transfer our birth to himself, okay? That we may no longer return as dust to dust, right? Because we're, what are we made out of, right? God formed um, Adam out of the dust, out of the, the, the dirt, um, and then breathed into him his spirit, right? But when we die, what happens to the body that was formed out of the dust? It goes back to dust, right? Um, but God didn't want that. He said, as being joined with the word from heaven, once the Lord God took flesh, took our form, he sanctified it, he blessed it, all of human nature, right? So, and he gave it the power to be raised to heaven. When he ascended to heaven, it was in the body that he took. Um, and that's not a small thing because he paved the way for all of us um, to, to get in the spiritual body, the entrance to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the ascension. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> but again, this is the beginning, the beginning of all 
the the gifts that, that that are open to us after starts with the incarnation and this is why saint athanasius focused so much on on this beginning part because not, it, all of this couldn't happen without it right um again saint athanasius writes the king of all right christ has come into our country like the story of the prince right and dwelt in one body amidst the many right he was one one person <laughs> he didn't appear as many right uh, and in consequence, the designs of the enemy, the, the work of the devil, uh, ha have been didn't work, right? The devil wants us to be separate from God. He wants us to um, not live, but die, right? Because the wages of sin is death, right? So um, it was working for a while until Christ took flesh. <laughs> then, you know, uh, there's no hope, right? If, if, if the person who wants to go to Christ... And, and knows the way to Christ, which is through the church, through his death, through his birth, through his resurrection, through the sacraments, the devil has no power over that. Um, and that's the beauty, again, of what the incarnation it gives us. The last step, point is the, that he is the high priest. And this is not something that we say lightly, as St. Uh, Paul writes to the Hebrews, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, right? Even though he's high priest, he's the, the Pope, <laughs> right? In a sense. Um, uh, but he can sympathize with us. Why? Because he took flesh, right? All the emotions, all the experiences, all the suffering that, that we might go through, um, Christ understands. Why? Because he, he lived. He lived as a man um, for 33 years. And he was even tempted like us, except that he didn't fall into temptation. He, did, he, he was tempted, but he didn't sin, right? Um, <clears throat> therefore, as St. Paul says, let's come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So because he can sympathize with us, um, that, that deepens the relationship with us and God, right? If you're talking with someone and you know for a fact they don't understand they can't sympathize you with you. They can't empathize with you. They have no idea of what you're talking about, what you're going through. You're going to go find someone else. <laughs> There's no point, right? And it's it de sometimes uh, depressing um, when, when, when you're trying to open your heart to someone. They have no idea what you're talking about um, or what you're feeling. But God is not like that. He hears us as the great high priest. Um, and like St. John says, if, if we ask any, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Um, so he came down on earth to show us that God cares for us, right? Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Um, <clears throat> and so the logos, the word of God, right? The, um, he's not just the word, but he is the communicator uh, of God's love for us as high priest. Right, and some people say, "Well, th this word logos it doesn't just mean word, right? It means communication. It means language. It means the message, right? So he is the message of God's love for us, right, and God's salvation for us. And he broke the 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 barrier between God and man that man had set up, which was sin, right? And now he's speaking in person to man, uh, proclaiming his love for man and the salvation that he offers him. Um, <clears throat> so this is what we mean by the great high priest. And again, to St. Timothy, St. Paul says, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, right? The Jacob's ladder, right? The, the one connection between heaven and earth is Christ. Why? Because he has heaven and earth in, 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 his, in his own person, right? The, the unity of God and man happened in Christ. <laughs> so this is... Um, this is the mystery of mysteries and is the beauty of the unity of heaven and earth, um, of God and man. In, in, and no one can take that place. No angel, no archangel, no man. Like, it's, it's not possible except through him. Okay. Um, so, going back to this, St. Athanas just kind of summarizes this acronym, right, of... Um, that God is, uh, came to forgive. He came out of his love, right? He came to grant us eternal life. He grant, came to help us as the high priest. St. Athanasius just kind of all wraps it up in this one uh, statement that he says, it was our sad case 
uh, man's sad case, that caused the word to come down, right? Um, our transgression that called out his love for us. So he made haste. He quickly came to help us and appeared among us. Um, <clears throat> so again, the purpose of why he took flesh. Um, so let's kind of talk about a few things that arise when, when we discuss the incarnation, right? The first thing is that um, it was not a normal birth, but it was birth uh, from a virgin, right? And this is the Orthodox doctrine of faith, that the virginal birth states that the Holy Virgin Mary gave birth to Christ in a manner that was not, uh, if you will, tainted by the fallen state of man, right? Like, some people, when we pray Psalm 50, what do we say? In sin, my mother conceived me. And, and some people misunderstand what we say when we, when we recite this passage and say that the marital union or giving birth is a sin. That's not what we're talking about <laughs> by, by no means. But since the fall, since Adam and Eve, um, man was in a state of sin. Sin is not just an act. It's, it's, it's a state. Um, and so there was no path of salvation for man since the fall. Man couldn't save himself. Um, even if you thought you lived a perfect life without do any, doing anything wrong, which is not possible, as we know. Um, but even if you would still have been in a state of sin, because you were born in a state of sin. But because Christ took birth from the Virgin, right, through the Holy Spirit, uh, that didn't apply to him. So he was not in a state of sin ever. <laughs> okay, that's the main difference between Christ, you know, and, and, and us. And so um, this happened without mingling. So without mingling, without confusion, without alteration, without change. And what do we mean when we say this? Um, that the eternal son of God, the Logos, right, became man, but he never stopped being God, okay? Um, so there was no change, right? There was no mingling between the, the, the two, right? Um, and some people call us monophysites or that we only believe in one nature of Christ because after the union, um, that he was only divine or that he was some people say only human. We say no, but, um, the, the two united, the two um, natures united into his one person and could not, they cannot be separated after the union. That's what we we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and so, it, but there was no confusion, meaning, um, like, you know, when you mix, you know, uh, tea and milk or wine and water, right? Um, it becomes something else, right? So Christ did not become something else. <laughs> he still was fully God and fully man in his person, right? That there was no change. Like when you add H2O, right? Or CO2, right? You, you take, um, two gases like hydrogen and oxygen, unite them together, right? And it becomes water, becomes a different substance. Um, that didn't happen with Christ. That's what we say without change, right? He never stopped becoming God <laughs> after he took flesh, right? And at the same time, um, because he took flesh and he was still God at the same time, that doesn't mean um, he didn't understand. That doesn't mean he didn't get hungry. That doesn't mean he didn't get tired. He, he was still fully met. Okay, hopefully that kind of makes sense <laughs> um <clears throat> and this is what we call the, this is the mystery so the incarnation is one of the greatest mysteries and the union of his humanity and divinity um it's we can only understand in part right um saint gregory the theologian he says he talks about this incomprehensible mystery he says christ hungered as man and fed the hungry as god right? He was thirsty as man, yet he said, let him who was thirsty come to me and drink. He was tired, and yet he is a rest. He paid tribute, yet he is our king. He was called the devil, and he cast out demons. He prayed, and yet hears prayers as, as the, the priest and the sacrifice. Um, he wept, and he dried our tears. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver, and he redeems the world. He is led as a lamb to the slaughter, and he is the good shepherd. He is mute, like a sheep, and yet he is the everlasting word. So it's hard to understand the two concepts, but nevertheless, that's what it is. St. <laughs> Athanasius also says, when the word was made man, he did not cease to be God. 
Uh, this is important for us to acknowledge. Nor because he is God did he avoid what is human. Uh, far from it. Rather, being God, he has taken the flesh to himself in his own person. Right? And in flesh, he deified or glorified the flesh. Um, again, that's the big deal for humanity. Um, and St. Cyril also says, all the natures are different humanity and divinity, which were brought together in the true unity. There is one Christ and one son from both. The difference of the natures are not destroyed, but rather the divinity and humanity formed for us one Lord Jesus Christ and one son, though incomprehensible and ineffable combination to unity. Um, and so um, uh, this is what the fathers call the d divine exchange, right? He gave us what is his and he took what is ours, right? He took the human nature, right, which is ours, and he gave us um, to be partakers of the divine nature, um, to be adopted children of God. Um, and so um, this interaction between God and man that happens through Christ is, is unique and it's very special. Uh, Tertullian, the scholar, he says, God's disgrace is really the mystery of human salvation. He lived with humanity as man, that humanity might be taught to live the, the divine life. He, God lived on humanity's level, that humanity might be able to live on God's level. The God was found weak, that humanity might become most great, right? He humbled to lift us up, right? He hungered to satiate us. And there's one of the, uh, I can't remember uh, exactly, but there's one of the fractions um, uh, to the sun uh, regarding this divine exchange. It's, it's a very beautiful one. Um, and uh, finally, we conclude by, again, St. Athanasius that, that is talking about what we were saying before about how this couldn't have happened except through Christ, <laughs> right? Um, salvation couldn't happen through a man or through an angel, right? And um, St. Athanasius says, well, what then was God to do? What else could he possibly do being God but renew his image in mankind? Because we distorted the image because of sin. Um, so that through it, men might once more come to know him. And how could this be done except by the coming of the very image himself? Christ, as we said, is the image of the only begotten of, of God, right? Um, he is the icon of God the Father. He is God in the flesh, right? Um, so he said, men couldn't have saved it or renewed that image. Why? Because we're only made after the image, He's the original. We are the copies, right? Angels couldn't have done it because they're not made in the image of God. They're created, yes, but they are for a purpose, right? We were, we we're the only creation um, that, it, that were made in the image and likeness of God. It says the word of God came in his own person because it was he alone, the image of the Father who could recreate or renew man after that image. And I think I've said this before, but St. Athanasius uses the example of a portrait, um, which, which is basically man who's created in the image of Christ, right? And um, after time or because of a fire or uh, something happened to this image and it becomes distorted, it becomes ruined. Uh, and that's what happened because of sin, right? So, well, back in the day, they didn't have photocopy machines, right? <laughs> they didn't have cell phones. So, well, how, how do we fix this portrait? Um, well, you have to bring the, the person that you originally painted, right? Um, have them sit again so you can reshape this image um, according to the original, right? So um, St. Athanasius says, okay, if that's what you do to a regular portrait, um, the, the portrait is man. Man got messed up, right? Um, even though he's created in the image and likeness of God. So how do we fix this? We have to bring Christ, <laughs> the perfect man. And then man can follow and, and his image will be renewed through Christ. Um, so uh, this is basically, uh, in a nutshell, the, the purpose and the blessing of the incarnation um, for the salvation of man out of love for God uh, for the world so we could open up eternal life. Um, <clears throat> uh, the rest I won't get into, but basically, um, if, if you want to study more of the beauty 
of uh, God uh, and his love through the incarnation. Um, a very nice passage to, to study or to pray is the divine liturgy of uh, St. Gregory the Theologian. Um, and I was going to, but it's kind of lengthy, so, but I would encourage you, especially the holy, holy, holy part, um, uh, you can contemplate and read and study uh, at your leisure uh, if, if you'd like to see the beauty of the love of God and the salvation that he grants man through the person of Christ. Uh, may God give us his grace and blessing as we continue the series next time to go deeper into the redemption and the salvation that we have through Christ incarnate. Um, you see, until next time, glory be to him now and forever to the age of ages. Amen.